All right, guys, we have somebody that's struggling to design in Mesh Mixer a little Nesbit for an immediate extraction. I guess they're pulling out this number. It seems like they would be taking this guy out, but I think they're taking this guy out. I'm like 10% sure, but let's go ahead and do it. So I'll show you how I do it. There's like a million ways to do this here. We're going to first, um, let's just go ahead and duplicate this model. So when we edit duplicate, we have a backup. And now I'm going to go ahead and select this tooth. And you could select a tooth in multiple different ways. The best way I find is just coming here and hit select. You could go by crease angle here. If you switch to uh, crease angle, sometimes that helps. But you're taking this tooth and you're selecting it with no voids in the orange. Um, you could also have it create face groups and alter the threshold of the face group and find the teeth that way. That's sometimes beneficial if you're doing multiple, multiple teeth. Just get right in here. Now, what I'm going to do here is try to get right at the CEJ. I'm going to hit this area right here. I'm going to hit B as in boy, and that's going to create a smooth border for me. Um, if it doesn't, it means you have a hole in your orange somewhere. I'm going to accept that. And then I'm going to hit Y as in yellow. That's going to give me that tooth as its own mesh. So here it is. And then I'm going to go to um, fill this in. The way that I like to do it is a little more complicated because um, I like to come in here and create uh, bridges at my CEJ area. Again, I'm going to go ahead and clear that selection and hit select right on the border here with no holes. See, it's right up to the blue line and hit edit bridge, hit accept. So now when I go to analysis inspector, I have a proximal surface here and here that it will fill in flat. And then I could fill in this with a smooth fill on the bottom. That smooth fill is wonky. So I'm gonna go to, well, actually I'll go to flat fill hit control Z to back up and I'll switch to flat fill and go back to inspector flat fill that that was a wonky smooth fill okay that's a little bit better so now I'm gonna hit done and I'm gonna go to sculpt brushes bubble smooth volumetrics off so that it doesn't go through to the occlusal anatomy here and I'm going to just go ahead and smooth this a little bit. Create like a ovate ponic site. Smooth that out. Now, if I wanted, um, that, that's probably all I need to do. Okay, now we need to address the model. And you could do the same thing, and I think it's worth it if you come in here and put your brush size down and not that tiny. Select a little bit right here at the CJ, so a little bit right here, and then go to Edit Bridge, Accept, Clear, Select, a little bit right here, and a little bit right here, Edit Bridge, Control B, Accept. I like to go through um, here now and go to Analysis Inspector. Ah, it still doesn't love me, but let's see what it does. Did good. So what you were looking for by bridging here is getting these surfaces to be flat like that. So now we're going to go to our sculpt brushes, uh, bubble smooth here. And we're going to really hold that control down, smooth this little guy here. And now you decide what kind of ovate ponic site you want. So to create the ovate ponic site, you go to the inflate and you could come in here hold your control down and start to sculpt an extraction socket here just big round circular movements let's say it's going to be like that and then you can come in here with your brushes and your robust smooth i don't know how much of an extraction socket they're going to have here and i want to err on the side of caution to where it the, the restoration actually seats 
um, and it's not going into the extraction socket too much. So I'm actually going to come in here and just inflate that a little bit. And I'd rather have a space there in the restoration seat for this person than to have it not seat. Okay, so now we have our tooth and our extraction socket. Now the tooth looks like it's pressing into the socket. So what we need to do here is to get them to be equal, turn on, um, go to our model and turn it magnetic and click on our tooth and go to um, sculpt, brushes, tract, and just ooh, turn the volumetric off so it doesn't distort the fitting surface and just get it to be coincident. Now it's gonna create perfect adaptation to that model. And that is it. So we're going to undo that magnetic and see it's hitting perfectly there. Okay, so next step now is to create our major connector and clasps. Um, so there's two or three different ways to do that. Okay, so one way, the way that I like to do this is a little different than I think what most people would do. I would go to my select tool here. And if you remember, printed RPDs have a shark fin type clasps. Fat here at the, fat at the, the area where it connects to the major connector here. It's like little shark fins like that. And it'll come down to a little connector here. And then we'll go into another shark fin. The point is, is that where it in, it's fat, never really super pointy, like a metal clasp and fat and really tall here and close a little gingerly at the base. And I would probably do something like this and I would hit B for smooth border, enter. Um, then I would hit Y for separate, control A for select all, D as in dog. And then I would put it at an offset of about one. 1.6 and then I hit accept and then I would double click this and hit uh, deform smooth just like that actually I would clear selection I would when I deform it with the smooth I just select the outer surface so it doesn't deform the inner surface and I go to deform smooth like that and I would bump the smoothness up a little bit Beautiful. Okay, I'd do that. And then I would clear that and I'd do the same thing on the lingual. I'd like to split it up this way uh, because of the way that the extrusion works. I could do, I'll show you what I mean. So shark fin really wide at the base and then pointy. Do a little shark fin here, really wide at the base, pointy. And a little connector here. Maybe something like that. Who knows? B as in boy, enter. Um, y as in yellow, control A. D as in dog. I could do a constant extrusion when I do it this way. Uh, if I have to hit a normal extrusion, it just distorts everything like that. So I like a constant extrusion. By keeping these separate, I could do that. I'm gonna hit um, accept, clear selection. And now I'm gonna select Double click here and hit deform smooth. And I'm going to go to the middle here. Beautiful. Accept. There we go. Now I have these two pieces here and I have my tooth. Where's my, not that, not that. It's not my tooth. There's my little tooth. Beautiful. So I need to combine these three pieces. So I'm going to hold control on my keyboard and click these three elements and hit combine. And then I'm going to go to make solid. And I'm going to hit my accuracy in the middle, accurate here, mesh density in the middle, and hit update, and hit accept. <clears throat> now I have a solid mesh here. And the thing that I need to check now is how well it fits. So I have this beautiful little guy here that I'm ready to go. Now what I need to do is come in here on my original master cast. This is the unedited model. And look at what I have here. So I need to be careful. I don't want all this contact here. It won't seat. I, I only want contact in a clasp tip area. So I'm going to go to sculpt, brushes, inflate, put my strength down to about 20. And really carefully hold my control button and just alleviate 
some pressure on the hard tissue. You can have some pressure on the tissue here. Um, it's the hard tissue that I'm worried about here. I just want that tip to engage like that. It's the only thing that should be touching. And like that, even that might be too much. So we're creating space everywhere else. Just gotta be careful here. I'm holding control and I'm on, what am I on? <clears throat> Volumetric is off and I'm on um, inflate. Yeah, this, this class will give me trouble here with my inflate. I'm gonna skip to um, bubble smooth. Hold my shift button or control button down on that. It's really gentle. Okay, so now I have contact here. Ooh, that's too much. There. Let me put the strength weight out. There. 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 And I am going to smooth everything else. Make sure that I have no contact here in my guide planes. And then I'm going to smooth. I'm just going to use robust smooth volumetric off. And what volumetric means is that um, it's not going onto the inner surface. I'm just going to smooth out these little sharp areas right here. And that is it, guys. That is. It. Now, what you're looking for for a printed uh, clasp is five millimeters height here from the top of the clasp to the gingival base here is the minimum. This is going to be too much of an undercut here, so I'm going to alleviate some pressure down there. Oops. Too much pressure. Oh, I love it. Too much pressure probably in here. Just going to alleviate a little bit of pressure. I want them to be able to see it in a little calming mode. And this is always where it gets bound up. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna turn off that guy. Look at that beauty. Let's just smooth that little guy right there. Love it. I'm gonna go ahead and go to file, export, uh, binary STL is what you want to print with. What is this, a Nesbit? Okay. That's it, guys.